Howdy, Mojave D here. I'm doing well. I hope you're doing well. I got a little treat for you. At least I hope you think it's a treat. I think it's a treat. Uh, this is who I think they should base uh, the a, um, second L.A. Noir on. It's Mike Hammer. Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer. But it has to be done in New York. So it has to be New York Noir. And uh, this is from a television show in the 1950s. Black and white. Had invented color TV yet, or hey, they might have been working on it, but it wasn't available to the general public. And even after it was, probably four years later, uh, not all shows were done in color. But uh, I hope you enjoy it. But and this will give you a bit of the flavor of why I think it should be Mike Hammer that they base it on. Just a touch, just a just a taste. Uh, it's not as good as the books um, uh, by Mick, Mickey Spillane. But to be fair. The writer of the series had to fit this in, you know, a 30-minute uh, black and white television show. So, you know, that's that's a challenge. It's got to move, right? It's got to move. So it's it's not going to have. Uh, he doesn't have. Like I say, he's got. He's at a disadvantage trying to trying to do do a story in 30 minutes. Um, but anyway, enjoy it. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to monetize this episode because. If I show you this, so if you feel like throwing 50 cents in the hat, you, you're welcome to do so, and I'll try not to spend it all in one place. So let's enjoy, shall we? Dad loved this show. <clears throat> My mother didn't care for it. Shoot before you look. Oh, you gotta be crazy. This is murder, Marty. Well, we gotta get out of here. Give me my gun, Clay. Nothing to do with it. You got enough heat on us now. I'm gonna get rid of it, then I'll know what's done right. That gun can tie me to this now. Give me that gun. Come on. I'm in this just as deep as you are. I can't trust you to get rid of it. I'm doing it for you. If anything goes wrong, Lenny, well, you just better make sure nothing goes wrong. Because I can only burn for this once. So this, I backed it up. This is the um, the moment where Lenny's partner, we'll find a name, his name out in a minute, um, realizes that they have a bad plan. <laughs> I think the plan was they were going to, you know, jump them when their backs were turned, when the victim's pat backs were turned to them, and then put sacks over their heads or something so they couldn't be identified. Why they weren't wearing masks, I do not know. It is a flawed plan. But this is the moment when, now the woman had, had escaped uh, from Lenny. She had turned and got out of Lenny's grasp, turns around, and she sees his face. And look at, you can see that's the moment right there when he realizes that. Now, Lenny never uses a gun. We'll find that out here in a minute. Uh, he never used a gun on his capers, and he's partnered up, partnered up with this fella. And Lenny doesn't know he brought a gun. And this guy used the gun to crack 
the man over the head and accidentally killed him, hit him too hard. So um, I just backed it up to that point. The acting is good. The acting is good. Backed it up too far. Well, I wanted to get his face, and then it's going to go from here. So I think what they were planning to do was jump him when their backs were turned. Not do that before Lenny can do his thing. That happens. She sees his face. She faints. He realizes he kills the man. The man's dead. Lenny, he's dead. I must have hit him too hard. I should have known better. I should have known you'd mean trouble. It's a flawed plan, yeah? Oh, boy. Now we're in deep. She saw my face. Look at Lenny's oh, face. You've got to be crazy. This is murder, Marty. Well, we got to get out of here. Give me my gun, Lenny. I'm nothing doing. You've got enough heat on us now. I'm going to get rid of it, then I'll know it's done right. That gun can tie me to this now. Give me that gun. Come on. I'm in this just as deep as you are. I can't trust you to get rid of it. I'm doing it for you. If anything goes wrong, Lenny, well, you just better make sure nothing goes wrong. Because I can only burn for this once. Now we're going to meet Mike. He's going to say he works for an insurance company. He doesn't. He's a private investigator hired by the uh, insurance company in this case. It, I just don't want you to think he always Women's works for an insurance company. Women themselves with diamonds for the same reason a theater marquee drips neon. To call attention to itself. Sometimes the wrong people are attracted. And that's when I deal myself in. I Let's back that up just a bit to, to get all the conversation. Because I was talking. Because it's a good line. This is a good line. Splash themselves with diamonds for the same reason a theater marquee drips neon to call attention to itself. Sometimes the wrong people are attracted, and that's when I deal myself in. I represent the insurance company. The next day, I was Michael on the spot. It's all right, don't worry about it. Miss Howe, I'm very sorry to disturb you at a time like this. I'm used to it. I've been answering questions all night. My name's Mike Hammer. I'm with the insurance company. I'm checking on the extent of the loss. Look, I've already told all that. You can get it from them. Well, I can talk to them any time. Everything was taken. Now, if you'll excuse me. Everything, Miss Howe? Everything, Mr. Hammer. Well, the, uh... I understand that she kept a number of the pieces in the vault. The diamond necklace, the bracelet, the earrings. She was wearing them all at the same time. Isn't that a bit unusual? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last night was their anniversary. She took them all out to wear for the big day. They're gone. Puts the loss in the neighborhood of uh, $50,000. My company gets very nervous in that neighborhood. I'm sure your company has my sympathy. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. But you see, after all, nobody can bring your aunt and uncle back, but the company is going to expect me to bring the jewels back. You have my best wishes, Mr. Hammer. Mm -hmm. Now, about this business of taking the jewels out of the vault every anniversary, did many people know about that? Well, I knew about it. I'm sure a lot of her friends did. Why? Well, these thieves interest me. They must be psychic. I don't understand. Well, they knew the exact night to hit. They knew approximately the time the folks would be home. I wonder how. Could be coincidence. Mm hmm could be. But uh, you don't think it was? No. Who would do such a thing? Well, when I catch the killers, I'll let you know. You're very confident, Mr. Hammer. Well, they can't eat the jewels, Miss Howe. Sooner or later, they're gonna try to turn them into something they can't eat. And when they do, we'll catch them. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll just poke around and see what I can find. Yeah, Hammer. The paper says you're looking for the ice from the 
killing last night, then, right? <sighs> Who's this? Call me Jonah. Uh -huh. What's in it for me if I can tell you where to put your hands on the ice and the guy that did the killing? The usual 5%. Make it 2,500. Sounds good. Can I trust you? Can I trust you? I'll get the stuff you don't have to pay. All right, fair enough. Where is it? From 703 Sherman Square what? Hotel. How do I find you to make the payoff? Don't worry, I'll find you. And Hammer. Yeah. Be real careful. The guy's a killer and he's got a gun. I didn't know you cared. I don't, but I can't collect from a shroud. What is he up to? Why did he do that? That's the killer. Room 703, please. That's his partner. That's Lenny. Hello? You did it, didn't you? You took my gun and then you put the finger on me. Marty, what are you talking about? The cops are looking for me. I warned you, Lenny, I warned you what I'd do if you read it. Marty, I swear, I still have the rod. Look, I haven't been out of the room. I haven't talked to anybody. You're the only witness I got, but you're not gonna do any talking. I'm in the lobby, Lenny, and I'm coming up after you. Set up. Marty! But why? Why this way? What's he, what's he up to? Lenny's partner, what's he up to? Marks, an old timer in the jewel snatch racket, but a Lenny Marks with a gun, and that was a switch. That was a switch. A Lenny Marks with a gun. So Hammer's dealt with him before. Looked like they were all there. A half dozen pieces of polished carbon. Expensive, oh, real expensive. These had already cost three lives. I figured it was about time to call Pat Chambers. Lenny's shot had only grazed me. The tetanus needle the doc stuck me with hurt a lot more. It was the next day before I could get around to dropping by police headquarters. Uh, Pat's the police captain. His friend, they're friends. Well, this is a rare occasion. Yeah, what is? You are calling on the police. A little late, perhaps, but then, uh... We've got no complaints this time. Oh, the bullets matched up, huh? No doubt about it. The gun Marks had on him was the one used to kill Mrs. Howell. Mm -hmm. You wrapped it up real tight, Mike. I wish I could feel that sure about it. What's there to be sure of? He had the jewels on him. He had the gun. <laughs> I'd say this is one time you walked away from it really smelling of violence. Yeah, 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 but I got a feeling, Pat. I got a feeling. Listen, you've had Lenny Marks in here before, haven't you? Well, sure. You got a package on him as long as you're on. You ever know of him carrying the gun? It's the first time for everything. Yeah, but the studio I got the tip from hasn't shown up to collect his 5%. Uh -huh. I haven't even heard from him. Yeah, that, uh... It does smell a little, doesn't it? Yep. How do you read it? Somebody wanted Lenny Marks out of the way. Somebody who knew he pulled the job, somebody who knew he had that gun. My guess is that somebody was on the job with him. And that someone tells you where to get the stuff back? Yep. What does he get out of it? Experience? He gets to walk away from a murder rap. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to see what's bugging you. Yeah. With the house out of the way, Lenny's the only one who could put the finger on the second man. If there was a second man. Yeah. yeah. I don't rent my gun for hire. And if somebody framed me into doing their killing for him, I want that somebody. And I'm gonna get him. Mike, as far as the department is concerned, the case is closed. The jewels are recovered, the killer's on a slab. Uh -huh. But I know how you feel. And I'm not sure I wouldn't feel the same way. Uh -huh. 
Funny Mark's wife was in here this morning. She's in a bad way. Oh, that figures. She wants to see you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. You got an address on her? Clerk outside will have one. Oh, Mike, mm -hmm. it's your face. If you want to wear it all scratched up. <laughs> it's been scratched up before, Pat. Good afternoon, huh? So, Lenny's wife wants to see Hammer, the man who killed her husband. Interesting. Mrs. Marks? Yeah. I'm Mike Hammer. Come in. I recognize your pictures from the paper. You want to see me? Yes, I did, Mr. Hammer. But this... Well, now go ahead and kill me. Go on. Murder me the way you did my husband. Oh, come on, come on, Mr. Hammer, kill me. Why don't you sit down, Mrs. Marks? I want to talk to you. What would you like to talk to me about? Would you like to tell me how you kicked down the door and how you killed him and how he never had a chance? And I had no choice. Your husband went down with a gun in his hand, still firing. That's a lie. Lenny never even had a gun. He had one the other day, and I've got a nick in my shoulder to prove it. Oh, well, aren't you a great big hero? Mr. Hammer, I believe that you planted a gun. Not a gun, Mrs. Marks. The gun, the gun that killed Mrs. Howe. Oh, no. Lenny could never, ever use a gun. Now, the funny thing is, Mrs. Marks, I agree with you. I don't think Lenny would use a gun either, not willingly. What do you mean? He expected somebody else to walk through that door, someone he was afraid of. He started firing before the door was even opened. And so you murdered him? I pulled the trigger, but I didn't murder him. You can pin that on the man who called me. Exactly. What man? I got a call. Some man told me where I could find Lenny and the jewels, but he didn't stop there. He probably called Lenny and told him something, enough anyway, for him to be waiting for me with a gun. Why? Who'd want to do something like that? I don't know. I can only guess it was the man who was on the robbery with Lenny. I want that man. I want him bad. Why, Mr. Hammer? Is your conscience bothering you? Is it just a little hard for you to sleep at night because you remember what he looked like? Maybe. But maybe it's because I don't want your husband known as a brutal killer if he wasn't. Mm. But mostly because I hate people who hide behind my gun and try to get me to do their dirty work for him. Now, who was Lenny working with? I don't know. My brother might know. He and Lenny were very close. And where can I find your brother? Here's his address, Mr. Hammer. It's in the village, just a short walk from here. Thank you, Mrs. Marks. Be careful, Mr. Hammer. As I said, they were very close, and he knows that you killed my husband. I'll be careful. See how he won her over by saying, I don't want your husband to be known as a brutal killer when he isn't. And then she was willing to help cooperate a little bit. certainly do get around, don't you, Chicky? Well, Mike Campbell, you wouldn't be following me by any chance. Following you? Well, no, the idea hadn't occurred to me. Until now. Then Until what are you now. doing here? I came to see Mrs. Mark's brother. How about you? Just visiting. Oh. It so happens that... Well, I didn't know we were having company. This is Mike Campbell, Marty. I know. Well, you won't mind if I run. Call you later. Goodbye, Mr. Hammer. Sure. I imagine I'll be seeing you again. Oh, I imagine. Uh -huh. Look him up and down, did not you? <laughs> what do you want, Hammer? A little information. I wouldn't give you the right time. Not even for five percent? You killed my sister's husband. You expect me to tell you anything? 
That's right. Lenny Marks was your brother-in-law. I sure, and Laura was the house niece. Well, that's quite a coincidence, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the brother-in-law of the boy robs the uncle of the girl, sort of keeping it in the family, wouldn't you say? Hammer, you got something to say, say it. All right, let's try this on for size. Number one, you knew when the jewels would be out of the vault. Number two, you had the power of persuasion to convince Lenny to try one more job. Now, should we go for three? I figure that's one speech I can turn on. What's the matter, Marty? You're getting shy. I thought you might like to make a speech. Get out. <clears throat> Now, you listen to me, tough guy. There's a law against pushing somebody around in his own apartment. Yeah? There's also a law against murder. Well, you pretty well fixed that with Lenny, didn't you? What do you want to do, dig him up and do it again? Now, I'm warning you, Hammer. You push me around, I'm going to yell cop so loud they'll hear me all the way across town. Oh, I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want the police to get you. I want that pleasure all to myself. Well, you're scaring me to death. You haven't got a leg to stand on, you know it. Hey, that's right, that's right, I don't. That's right. But now that I know what I'm looking for, maybe I'll know where to look. Yeah. Wipe the lipstick off, will you? Okay. Marty Davis, a day before opening my own personal war on him. He was going to be fed some of the same medicine he'd dished out to Lenny. I gambled he'd be scared enough to swallow it. As I figured it, his first move was to try and buy protection. That meant he'd run to one of a few choice characters around town. My first guess was Jita, who'd sell anything from a marked deck of cards to a submachine gun. The guess was good. I don't know, Marty Davis. I, I mean, I never even heard of the guy. I saw him come here. I saw him go out. Now, what did he buy? He was just browsing, you know, just browsing. Sure, just browsing. He bought a gun, didn't he? Uh, did he? Did he? Oh. He's dead. He bought a gun. Uh -huh. Now, what about the other time? At the time? Yeah, this isn't the first thing you sold Marty Davis. Now, this. I'm the head. All right, I thought you were you shaking my teeth loose. At least you still got him. He keeps talking like this, and you won't have All right, all right. So maybe Marty did have another gun. I asked him about it. And you know what he said? Yeah. He laughed at me and he said, mind your own business. No, I ask you, is this the right way to talk to a guy who goes out on Olympia? I ask you, is this the right I way? I bleed for you. Now, what was the serial number in that other gun? Oh, I don't know. You don't know? Oh, you hot stuff, Hammer. How can I give you the serial number when the number's been filed off? Yeah, don't give me that. I swear it. You no, I don't. have identifying your own hardware now. No, what? I... Uh, you don't, huh? Well, you dying gay. Up and sore up in his face. Slugs, what slugs? It so happens that I don't trust the guy that sells me the gun. So? So, so, so I shoot a couple of slugs into the mattress. Out in the back there. It so happens, uh, it so happens that you can finger any guy you ever sold a gun to. All right, you little creep, give me those slugs. Come on. Marty ever found out. Don't, Hammer don't, don't, Marty don't, ever don't, found don't, don't worry, don't worry. Nobody has to know you keep your nose clean. As a matter of fact, you make sure that Marty Davis doesn't find out now, you hear? Marty, buddy, you can trust me, buddy. Sure. You know? Sure. Okay, Hammer. Watch your face. Watch your face. He's got slugs. This guy. Pat Chambers arranged for ballistics to run a fast check on the slugs. I think we both knew what the answer was going to be before the report came in. Yes, Al. You have? Oh, fine. What is it? Uh, okay, uh, put it in writing and shoot it up to me as fast as you can. So? Slugs check out. They're from Lenny Mark's gun. No, no, not Lenny Mark's gun. The gun that he used. The gun belonged to Marty Davis. Knowing that and proving it could be two different things. Look, uh, Jeter sold him the gun. The slugs check out. Jeter. What good is Jeter's word? Everybody knows he sells out to the last one to talk to him. We've had him on perjury twice. Look, without him, Marty walks away and laughs in my face and I can't do anything about it? Look, Mike, I'm just being realistic about it. Outside of Jeter, you can't tie Marty to the how job. He wasn't in the room with Lenny. He had none of the jewels. He set it up. His girl is Hal's niece. He fingered the job through her. I'm not saying that's not how it was. Well, then what are you saying? Yeah, prove it. Can you prove it? Can you make it stand up in court? What do you want? What do you want? You want Marty to walk in here and confess? That's just about the size of it. The only three people who can put the finger on him are dead. Yeah, I killed one of them. Well, nobody blames you for that. I do. Blames I wish I could help, Mike. 
You can. Stay out of my way. I waited until the following day. By now, Jeter would have had time to sell his information to Marty Davis. I figured to start a few more fires under him to smoke him out into the open. Now, really, Mr. Hammer. This isn't a social call, Chicky. I'm just tying up the loose ends of your uncle and aunt's murder. That's a closed case. The police are satisfied. The killer has been caught. And the insurance company is satisfied, too. And I'll bet you're just tickled pink. Will you please leave? Yeah, after I get one thing straight. What's that? I'm curious to see if you're just plain dumb or whether you're bound and determined to try the hot seat out for size. What are you talking about? Lenny Marks was your boyfriend's brother-in-law. Knowing Marty doesn't make me an intimate of his entire family. Yeah, 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 but it makes you part of a very messy deal. There was only one way that Lenny Marks could know the exact time to make that heist. That's by a tip-off, Chickie. From you to Marty to Lenny. That's a lie. There's also an interesting payoff. The gun Lenny had wasn't his. It belonged to Marty. Lenny never owned a gun in his life. I won't listen to this any... Maybe you better, honey. Because if you're carrying a torch for Marty, you're the one that's gonna get burned. Get out of here. Okay. Well, I found out one thing, anyway. I know now why Marty was anxious for me to recover the jewels. He'd get them anyway. By marrying you. Oh, oh, oh. Well, give my regards to the lover boy, will you? I tell him that I was asking about his health. I tell him he's not going to have it much longer. Well, if it's not true, why don't you stop Hammer from saying such things? He can't prove a thing, honey. Is there anything to prove, Marty? Of course not. Marty, Hammer said the gun Lenny had was yours. Laura, I've never owned a gun in my whole life. Well, then you've got to see Hammer and face up to him. And giving him an excuse to gun me down? Honey, if you're innocent, he wouldn't dare. That's murder. Uh, just like he did with Lenny. Yeah? Who? Yeah, I was out. Yeah. Thanks, Selma. Now do you believe me? Hammer told Selma he was out to kill me. You told me you never owned a gun. Never mind what I told you. Now we're gonna get out of here fast and we're gonna get married. Why, Marty? Why what? Why are we getting married? Because a wife can't testify against her husband? I'm not going. Don't push me too hard, Laura. I don't have too much to lose. Yeah? Jeter, you creep. You sold me out, didn't you? Hammer, I don't know what you're talking about, Hammer. Brilliant. Really? You told Marty Davis about the slugs. Oh, not me. I mean, I wouldn't cross you. Not me. Let's say you won't do it twice. I'm going to give you another chance. I'll do anything you say, buddy. You call Marty Davis at exactly six. Tell him I'm on my way to his house to kill him. Yeah. Hey, Jeter, if you spill this to the police, just remember that. You're going to have a long time of talking with the fishes. All right? Brilliant. Did you see what he did? Did you see it? What uh, hammer is setting up? Hello? Police headquarters? Yeah, well, give me Captain Pat Chambers of Homicide. Comes back. Concisely at six. Hammer. You all right, Pat? You should know. You wrote the script. Give me the doctor, please. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Help. He doesn't have to, Mr. Hammer. You were right. He was behind the robbery and he killed them both. He just told me. Well, Marty. I almost made it. I almost made it. Oh, you'll make it all right. All the way to the death house. He's not dying. No, just a fright. He'll stand trial. Right, Pat? 
I ought to throw you in the clay. No, 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 no. What for? You said we needed a confession. I didn't tell you to set me up as a clay pitcher. Now, wait, wait a minute now. I told Gita not to call you. Yeah, yeah, you knew that was the one way you could be sure he would. Yeah, well, it just goes to show you can't trust anybody these days. Oh, oh. oh I think you better come with me, miss. And in true James Bond style, uh, Hammer gets the girl. Ah, ah. So what do you think? Pretty good, huh? I mean, as far as basing a, a, a second L.A. LA noir, New York noir, it would have to be on the Mike Hammer character. Uh, and you can see in the middle there uh, the frustration that I feel, and you probably feel too, when you have the case solved before the end, you know, uh, you've got, you know, who did it. I mean, I, I, you know, we did that in the last case that we solved, uh, and on the first one too. Um, this, the, the, the second case got me a little baffled. I didn't have that one solved early, but you get the case solved in, in, in LA Noir. I mean, at least I do. And, and I'm sure some of you do too, before you can prove it. And that frustration that, uh, that, Ah, okay, now we got to go through the, you know, how do we prove it? But you, you anyway, you see that you can see, I don't need to, to, to tell you the similarities between just that one little episode of a TV show in the 1950s and L.A. Noir. Um, and, and again, um, man, if you're going to, you know, buy the book, I, the jury, I, as in uh, me, myself and I. The Jury by Mick, Mickey Spillane. That was the first Mike Hammer one. And he wrote about a dozen of them, uh, books. They were called Pulp Fiction uh, books back in the day. Um, and, and read it. Uh, really good stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, do that to, uh, to show why I think it should be based on a Mike Hammer type guy. Mike Hammer, my spirit animal. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go to L.A. Noir and solve some cases because I'm ready because I want to solve a case now, right? All right. <laughs> we'll see you over there in uh, L.A. Well, all right, now that we uh, watched that uh, Mike Hammer episode, um, are we ready? We are ready, man. We are ready to solve some crimes, man. And first of all, I want to thank, thank you all for being here. You know, we're going to go out and get some, uh, and deal with some more crazy people. You know, uh, just like us. <laughs> so we're in good we're in good company here. But um I I'm I'm not happy, man. Cole's not happy. He's not he's not satisfied. We got four stars on the last two cases. We solved two cases on the last one. And uh, you know, if I had done if I had been less aggressive on that first case, um with the console's car, um I think we could have five starred that one. Um, and I, I was too aggressive and made some mistakes and the questioning. And then on the second one, so I kind of backed off of that. I think we could have five starred that if I'd have been more aggressive, you know, you know and, and hit the accuse button uh, a, a little more often. So um, uh, thank you all in the comments for um, uh, giving me tips on all that kind of stuff uh, on how to how to work that um, good cop, bad cop accuse thing. Um, and, and y'all had, uh, several different, uh, takes on it. Well, all the same, the same, um, um, reasoning uh, for each one of those, but, uh, you know, different, um, different techniques, different strategies, uh, with different, uh, situations and the information that you have. So, um, I wrote those down. <laughs> I got my own notebook. I have my own notebook. Uh, so I wrote down. Uh, several of you, you know, people with different takes on, on, on how to do that in different situations, uh, different advice, uh, you know, for how to do it in different, depending on, on, on the clues and stuff that you've uh, uh, accumulated. And so I appreciate that very much. And I, so I've got my notes here. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And then and my ballpoint pen, <laughs> my cheap ballpoint pen, which is almost out of ink. And uh, I have another pen or three. So anyway, um, I'm gonna, I want, I want, man, I got one five star on the very first case, 
and I want that again. I want I want to do that right again. I don't know how I did it right, and I still don't know how I did it right. The easy part is figuring out who done it, so to speak, right? I mean, uh, for me, I mean, I'm I'm pretty good at at, at figuring out what's going on, um, except for that first case in the last episode. That one kind of had me. I wasn't sure what was going on early on, but on the second case uh, with the hit and run, um, man, I, I had that figured out early, uh, but I just, it was just proving it is the hard part, isn't it? So, um, also you guys told me about, um, I've unlocked different suits, uh, suits that Cole can wear. I don't know where to find that. Uh, I unlocked uh, supposedly some different vehicles that we can use. I don't know where to find that. So if you could tell me where to find that, that'd be great. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, but you got to be real specific. You know, you got to tell me exactly what button to hit. Here, hit this button first and then hit this button. I'm playing on Xbox. Uh, so those are the buttons. And, um, you know, you, you're probably laughing at me for having a notebook and saying, well, why didn't you just take a screenshot of the comments that were giving you a little help? Uh, because me and technology are not friends and I prefer to write it down. I am old school. <laughs> I had to put the school part in there. So let's, let's shut me up and I'm going to try not to talk too much, uh, so that we can, we can get through this. Um, so let's, uh, let's restart it because, uh, we ended the episode just beginning the next case, so um, let's let's solve it. Uh oh, I hope restart takes me back to that point. Odd man out. No, a slip of the tongue. Yeah, that's a slip of the tongue. Is that the one? It has to be. That's where I stopped. Phelps, Kowski. B cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Right, Kaiser Fraser. Address six West Second Street. Get over there, see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. These guys are also. Awesome. We're on it, Captain. Wise guys, all of them. New objective: investigate stolen vehicle. Uh, new location: stolen vehicle. Call. Let's get. I swear, the more bent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. Keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. Mrs. I'm not Phelps. sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe a word of it. Phelps yeah, took a uh, swipe at me. Put him down with my sap. Cole is, uh... Can't get out that way. Cole is, um... Okay, how do we get out of the building? Crying out loud. There we are. Okay. All right. We're back to uh, this and not a, um, a police vehicle. Also, you guys told me in the in the comments that if I drive, uh, there's a, a, an opportunity to get um, um, side missions. Uh, it's just that me driving is a very risky proposition, <laughs> you know? Okay. So... Uh, Let's go around here and, and turn. So I also need uh, practice driving. try this I'm just it just might take forever to get to the location he also said that if I push I think it was I, oh I'm looking at my controller I think you said if I push X um, my partner will give me directions so I'm pushing X but he's not giving me directions oh we got a red light we're gonna blow it <laughs> just blow through that Stick. 
Well, run, it, run into Siren and let's be uh, blow red lights. So that's cool. Okay, I'll turn it on. I haven't gotten anything on the radio yet. What's the blue dot behind me? Uh, hold on. So what is the blue? I have a blue dot. What what the? What's the blue dot all about behind me? Um. Oh, the police station. Okay. So I think we're going to where we need to go. Oh, dude! Turn right in front of me. I had a green light, didn't I? All right, straight up ahead. Here's we're on target for it. That guy drives like me, the guy in the light blue car. We're coming up. I think we're coming up on it. Is the car off? I think the car off. will it automatically stop when I get there? I think it will. Yeah, cuts in. 12.41 p.m., 6 West 2nd Street. That's the car call. Just pulling out of the drive. Get it. <laughs> right off the bat, man. I just got to work. Remember, we need him healthy enough to answer questions. Healthy enough to answer questions. Okay, I will not kill him. 47, Detective Phelps, requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Catch up, catch up. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. Try it. Lay into his wheel arches. Come on. Bracelets on him, Phelps. I'll call it in. Car 11K to KGPL. Suspect in custody requires transport back to Central Station. Requesting a patrol unit. Did I do good? What, what do we got? We got a. Put your hands where I can see them. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? For what? I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. He does. Okay, we have a receipt from Tom Cole. Like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. 1947? So is that the current year? That's, is that, I thought the game was in 48. So this is in 47? Ah, uh, so I'm trying to tap on it. Twenty-four fifty. That's a pricey car for for that uh, time. And I remember when the Mustangs came out. Brand new nineteen sixty-four Mustangs came out there about that price. Um, this is a better car than a Mustang. So I'm trying to tap on it. I'm trying to flip it. Uh, nothing's happening. We've got a receipt from Coombs Automotive, Cliff Harrison. Okay, we need CID on the, him. Prove that he's Cliff. Vehicle reported stolen. You purchased this car from Coombs Automotive Company? Yeah, that's right. Oh, he's not lying. Okay, we'll go, we'll go good, good cop. And the ownership papers? From the same place. Pink slip? Not this the same is name, it's same address. This is good. Traced. Oh. What did he say? Forgery? Nah. See, I was talking and I was reading the top, and then the writing comes across the bottom. He said something about a forgery? Fraser Manhattan. Can I, I don't. Can I flip this? I can. Okay. So, no transfer information on the back. So that uh, odometer reading, uh, so that would uh, indicate 
Can I flip it back, please? Flip it back to the front, please. I want to see the front. <laughs> I don't have the option to see the front. Uh, all right, well, that tells us that he is the current owner. <laughs> Do not carry in vehicle. So apparently this kid can't read, but that's okay. That's I'll shut up. Okay, well, I don't know what else to do with it. Um, okay, so we have a, a receipt. We have a pink slip. But the game is telling us he said something about a forgery? You have a criminal record, Mr. Harrison? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that, and he starts blinking like, look at the blinking, blinking like crazy. Uh, bad cop. Uh, oh man, see, I don't want to blow this. Um, but I don't believe him, and we can't accuse him of anything, so we have to go bad cop. You better give us something, Cliff, or we're gonna make this hard on you. I didn't steal the car. I ran because, because I've got some wacky backy in the glove compartment. <laughs> How much, Cliff? <laughs> One reefer. One reefer. We'll let it slide. You're in enough trouble. <laughs> yeah, we don't need paperwork uh, for a re one reefer. In 1947, uh, vehicles purchased it. Oh, see, I missed. He had it. It said something about R. Um, crap. I need to read. This is how I make mistakes. Use R to observe suspect. Blinking. Gulping. Yeah, he's nervous about something. Well, who did you deal with at Coombs Automotive? The owner, Richard Coombs. Okay. Uh, okay, no, no reason to um, not believe him. I mean, he's not gulping. He still blinks a lot. I mean, maybe he's just a blinky guy. And he made out the bill of sale personally? Of course he did. He kept a facsimile for his records. Check with him. Facts. We're going to get to the bottom of this, Harrison. Until we do, you're going downtown. You've got to be kidding me. I'm getting arrested for buying a goddamn car? And running is legit, and causing Harrison. me to You'll crash. Until then, if I were you, I'd keep my mouth shut. Good advice. Bag his possessions as evidence and have him arraigned for Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Auto. They got to get you that in every chance is. they can, don't they? We need to get to Coombs Auto and check out Harrison's story. Um, okay, uh, but, uh, um, well, okay, I'll drive. Um, can you drive to this one? Oh, shoot, I, I just asked All him right. to drive. Where to? I didn't mean to do that, I just wanted to look. Coombs Automotive, 528 West 5th Street, car sales yard referred to by Cliff. I'm sorry, I, uh, I, I meant I'm to. sorry, madam, police officer, I need your car. What did we do? Doing? What? What did we I just do? Hold it! I just. <laughs> we have a better car. Why did we take this one? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> How did that happen? So here's here's the thing. Okay, look, real quick. Let's look at um, options. So where is the option to look at? <laughs> We just commandeered her car. I mean, I don't see anything for, you know, where I can um, look at. Uh, um, um, where I can uh, have new suit, a different suits and a different car. Well, we know how to get a different car now, don't we? Uh, log. <laughs> you know what? I think he's telling the truth. Okay. Um, see, there isn't any option that I can tell to, to <laughs> get to those things. I can't believe we just stole a car. Uh, where are we going? Well, it doesn't matter. I accidentally asked him to drive. Oh, I, that would have been easy. See, I wanted to drive to get practice and to uh, have the opportunity to, um, well, that's not where we're going. We're going to the flag. 
Coombs. Uh, to maybe pick up um, side missions. Some of the most convincing people you will ever listen to are born liars. Usually they're called politicians. <laughs> we took, we took these guys' car. Coons. Three thirty-five p.m. Okay, I gotta shut up and really focus. Vehicles. Not another step. I have got a Buick Century sedan that would be absolutely perfect for you. My mom liked Buicks. Detective Phelps, LAPD. Are you the owner? That's right. Richard Coombs at your service. You looking to trade in a black and white, boys? <laughs> Mr. Coombs, we're investigating an auto theft. A man by the name of Cliff Harrison claims he bought the car here. Well, uh, some people would say that my cars are a steal. Uh -huh. That's a joke, son. Uh, Very amusing, Mr. Cohen. Uh, I remember Harrison. It was a green two-tone Kaiser Fraser, if I remember right. Do you have the memory. bill of sale? It's in my office. Walk this way. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's a joke, too, son. Lost on me. Do nope, you mind if I shoot this guy? He's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I like our partner. <laughs> Did he just... He didn't just do walk this way joke. He did. He did. Oh, my God. 1947. Okay, where do we, uh, how do we talk to this joker? Can I sit? Can I sit in the chair across from him? Hey, hey Phelps. Cole. There you go. Here it is. Got the original pink slip there, too. Well, let's look at the pink slip. Ah. I said pink slip. Exactly the same. A, a copy. Okay. Harrison's purchase receipt was legit at least. Yeah. No. Gene Archer. 146 North Fremont Avenue. Investigate her address. Ownership papers. Uh, A to further investigate. Yep, okay. Transfer looks good. Combs, Combs signs it. Can we scroll up? I, I, I can't do anything else with it. Okay, this is what I wanted to see the front. I wasn't done. I get, yeah, let me pick it back up. It won't let me scroll around on it. 1947 automobile. Um, California certificate of ownership. It looks exactly the same. So why did he say something about a forgery? Okay, let's, let's talk to him. We have a couple of questions. All right, fellas. Shoot. Shoot, bang. Well, details of the transaction. Let's go right down Can the list. Can you tell us how you came to buy the car? Girl just wandered in right off the street. He's relaxed. He's looking straight at us. Yeah, I believe him. Nothing unusual about the car. Not really my usual type of vehicle. The price was certainly right, though. Nice girl, but about as sharp as a bag of wet mice. <laughs> Did you pay with check or cash? A check. A bag of she wanted it made out to cash, but I insisted. Man has to watch his cash flow. What name? I made it out to Gene Archer on the Bank of Arcadia. Check three. Uh, okay, so far I don't see any. Um, yeah, straight at us. Calm as a cucumber. Okay, uh, description. You're as thick as a whale sandwich, aren't you, son? What did he say? I'm as thick as a whale sandwich? Who is this guy? Okay, description. Can you describe this Gene Archer? <laughs> Brunette, maybe 25, 26. A little on the plump side, but not bone ugly. <laughs> Looking straight at us. Relax. Cough. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, good cough. What was your impression of her? Kind of harried and harassed. In a hurry to go somewhere, but no place to go. You get to know the
he's fine. Okay, yeah, we're staying on. Uh, okay, let's talk to association with uh, Marquis. Do you know anything about the company that prints these pink slips? Nope. Should I? It isn't exactly my business. Uh-oh. Well, he's right. It's not his business. Uh, view, uh, view notebook. Uh, can I turn the page back? Hey, why can't I turn the page back? Um, he's fine. I, I'm going good cop. Uh, hey. It says Marquee Printing. You've never heard of them? Marquee. Sure. They do all the government red tape. You'll find the place down on Aliso Street near San Pedro. Okay, we have an address for them. Um... Yeah, he's solid. Okay, check. Uh, okay, so how did you pay for it? When exactly did you hand over the check, Mr. With Trump? the check. Close of play on Friday. Uh-oh. Now. He crossed his arms. He's not telling us everything. Ah. Uh, uh, um. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go bad cop on this, because he's suddenly a little nervous. Okay, here we go. I hope I don't blow it. Why didn't you pay her cash? You knew the car was dirty. I had an inkling. When people are in a hurry for money, always pay by check, son. Gives you a couple days to back out. Okay, got a little. So, he was suspicious about the deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, because now you've got a, a, a higher end car. I mean, it's not your average um, transportation vehicle like the one we commandeered from those poor people. Uh, it's a little above that. So, okay, all right, I can look at him. So he leaned forward. You're as thick as a whale sandwich, aren't you, son? <laughs> Come on, Cole. We need a comeback. So why were you suspicious? I mean, so he's suspicious. That's why he wrote the check. So there were thoughts in his brain that it was stolen. This was all above board. Yes. Of course it was. Uh-uh. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I got to look at my notes here. Um, there's nothing to accuse him of. I'm. Okay, this is the hard part. I don't want to blow this. Uh, I'm staying bad cop because look at him. Look at him. Did this look legitimate to you, Coombs? I'm in used cars, son, not bearer bonds. In my business, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Now, don't come on all high and mighty with me if you want my help. Thanks for your help, Mr. Coombs. We need to continue. Five of five, correct. I did it. Hope you sort out your problem with Mr. Harrison. Go easy on him, son. Boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. He's built too low. The fastballs fly over his head. Let me shoot this guy, please. Yeah, shoot him. You have a pleasant day, Mr. Coombs. I like I like our partner, but I kind of like Mr. Coombs too. <laughs> I tell you something, Bob. So we got this lot. Well, Harrison might be off the hook, but we can still run an APB on Gene Archer. Get on the horn and call it in. <laughs> well, let's let's steal another one. Let's let's get. Uh, can I can I just take any car I want? How about we take this one? I like this one. Can I get in this car? Oh, what are we doing? Um, a map. Well, hold on. Um, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to record. I need to review all of this and, and see what we're going to do. But uh, uh, <laughs> it's, I mean, right off the bat, we get into a car chase. And the kid's all nervous because he's, he's got a joint in his car. And, uh, 
what do you call it, wacky backy, and um, stolen car with very legitimate looking documents. Um, I mean, those are official documents. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm. I need to review this, and then uh, I'll be right back at you, man. Uh, go have a cup of joe, man. Take a quick break. Man, I still, I still can't get over that. We commandeered a car. Is it because, like, can you do that? Like, if your car's broken, like, was our car broke? Did I ruin it by crashing into that kid, into the, uh, into his car? Um, so what we don't, can you describe Jean Archer, impression of her? Um, let me make some notes. I, uh, um, uh, um, well, I can refer back to this too. I know. Um, but I'm trying, I'm just being really careful. Um, let's, um, um, what, what was the next thing for us to do? Um, uh, oh, they're giving us a call booth um, in, on the map. Um, <laughs> I was going to take, uh, I was going to see if we could just take any car we want. Uh, 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 let's go. Oh, I know why uh, we want to do this. Uh, we need to get some more information on uh, Gene Archer. Um, Maybe they have an address. Well, we got her address on the uh, pink slip. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. Solved the big case and got promoted. How could I help, detective? Requesting an APB on Gene Archer, age approximately 25, on suspicion of grand theft auto. I'll relay the information. Messages for me, please. A James Velasco is being held at Central Station on suspicion of GTA. Possible link to the Harrison case. They're waiting on you to conduct the interview. Thanks for your help. Uh, James Velasco. This guy must have escaped from the loony bin. Who? Talking to you instead of talking to me. Um, 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 Velasco? Oh, my, my partner's already in the car. Ah, uh, hold on. Um, well, let's, uh, look. You're behind the wheel. No, I just wanted to <laughs> Do look. we know where we're going? Well, this was the address for, what's her name? So, uh, where I got messed up last time is I didn't do these things in order. Uh, well, let's go check out the address on the pink slip for um, Gene. Here's a chicken and egg question for you. Do you think you have to be an asshole to sell cars? Or that selling cars turns you into an asshole? You've got it in for everyone today, haven't you? I've always got it in for car sales. It doesn't matter what they do. And why do they always think they're comedians when they're about as funny as a heart attack? Maybe the more annoying they are, the quicker you sign on the dotted line. Just to get the hell out of there. The Alkali Lake is the Broadway, Hollywood. Tremont uh, Avenue at 351. Empty. Should have known that Archer Broad would have given us a false address. Aha! We should go to the station, see what this Velasco guy has to say. Fake address? Hold on. I just... <laughs> what he said about car salesmen. Uh, now, I've never been a car salesman, but we did. I did sell RVs. And at one point, you see that little lot that guy has with, you know, with his, his used cars on there. Uh, we had a, uh, my brother and I had a, um, a consignment uh, lot for RVs. So people who wanted to sell their RVs, but they didn't want to deal with all the hassle of, most people uh, would have their RV in storage, you know, on a storage lot somewhere. And it's just sitting there, you know, and it, it, 
the, the motor doesn't get started. It collects dirt, you know, you know, that's blowing in the air and it's sitting there. And then they, they have to deal with strangers coming to, to talk to them, you know, talk to strangers and meet them out at the, you know, where they have it in the storage lot and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they're opening up a, a coach that's been sitting in, in storage and it's stuffy and all that. So, you know, our, our, our pitch was, you know, look, we, you know, leave it with us. You don't have to pay storage on it anymore. Uh, we'll open the windows every morning. We wa we wash the coaches every day. We start all the coaches up, you know, so the motors aren't aren't just sitting there, you know, getting clogged up. Uh, you know, you know the the oil and the gas starts to thicken up on them, and make sure the batteries are stay charged. And we pull the awnings out, and we'd set up you know some chairs and a little table out under the awning, and we'd put decorations, flowers, and you know plates with some silverware, and you know make sure that the the beds the bed looks nice, and it's got the you know the the uh, the cover on it and everything, and the pillowcases, everything looks good. We're selling them. We're selling. Uh, you know, um, you know, you know, to get them to consign with us, we weren't. <laughs> so what he said about the car salesman kind of, kind of struck a nerve with me. He said, "Hey, man, I, I didn't like that." Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, we would have people come in off the street like this lady. But uh, you always, but they, we would never buy the coach off of them. They would have a set amount. Like I want forty-seven thousand dollars for my coach. You know, and uh, well, sure enough, you can sell it for forty-seven thousand. You know, most people already looked it up in the blue book, right? They know that they could sell it for forty-seven thousand. But um, you know, I, I I tell you what, we'll sell it for you and take take all those other headaches away from you. And like I said, we wash them every day. We start them up every day. We have security at night. The the gates close and we're locked up. Your coach is safe. And every morning, you know, we open the windows and set them up. You know, and and have a nice display and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, then we would say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's worth $47,000, but, you know, um, you know, I'll tell you what, we'll sell it for you and I'll give you 44, you know, because, you know, we, we, we're in, we're in business to make money, aren't we? And, um, you know, we take 44,000, I'll get you 44,000 and they'd say yes or no. Anyway, um, now I forgot what I'm doing. <laughs> I can't be telling stories all the day. We had some interesting characters on that RV light. Selling RVs is really a, uh, a a very interesting business. You meet the nicest people. RVers are, are the nicest people, but you do run into some interesting uh, and funny stuff. But I'm not going to do that. I need to concentrate. So give me a minute here to get my head back on. Say, what are we doing? I forgot what we're doing. Uh, we're headed for the station to talk to... Um, somebody, <laughs> we just got a new name and everything. Give me a minute. I got to review it. Dang it. Oh, wait, look what just popped up. I mean, <laughs> I just, I just thought I, I, I didn't go away uh, to review uh, outfits, outfits, three of six. Oh, that is too cheesy. Hey, bad. What's six look like? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, that's pretty good right there. I like the tie. That's kind of uh, really interesting looking. No. Ooh, that's a little more formal. That kind of a little more formal. Look at that. The city of angels is much more dangerous at night. So that's what he wears at night, I guess. His patrol. <laughs> uh, get yourself two suits. That's what he's wearing. Uh, best worn while rub, rubbing shoulders with movie stars. <laughs> Hit harder and take more punches before going down. Uh, I don't know. Are we going to be punching anybody? Uh, shoot straighter with the Garand and the Colt. Are we going to be shooting? Are we going to be fine? So the outfits give you a buff. Is that what I'm? Okay. So I was just laughing at these, but this, so this is, is something like if we're going to be fighting. Well, let's put this on. I mean, if we're dealing with GTA people, um, we might, we might, we might get in a gunfight. 
Um, I like how they put GTA in this game. Every, every chance I get, they mention GTA. I like that. Uh, well, let's well let's see what this does. And then and now I gotta pause and get caught up. Outfits. So where's cars? Where's cars? Cause I'm still <laughs> I'm in those four people's car. Uh, all right, give me a minute here. I gotta I gotta get myself caught up. I gotta get focused and quit doing these this other getting myself sidetracked. I'll be right on back. All right, so we're gonna head for this new guy, uh, Belasco. I think is what they want us to do. And I think did I already select that? Get back in. You can drive. Uh, Fine. Where are we headed? Printing. Central Police Station. See, now they got me confused. Is Velasco? I think we're going to the police station. Yeah, they said he was waiting for us at the police station. That's where we're going. <laughs> we're playing a Chinese fire drill. Oh, shoot, my big head's still in now. I'm sorry, guys. Jail, 357. Oh, so who's Belasco? Bel uh, okay. Detectives, Belasco is prepped and ready in two. Another stolen car with legit papers. Thanks. Okay. Prepped and ready in two. Press office. Hey, partner, you know where... Where two is? There it is. Interview room two. So we got a light seat. Crummy bastard. What? James Belasco? I want a lawyer. It's my car, and I got the proof right here. Take a look for yourself. So he's got the. S James Paper is real enough, Belasco, but the car isn't yours. This pink slip is a forgery. So there he is with the forgery again. But these look really official. And it hasn't been transferred to him. So it's it's saying that he owns it. I want to make homicide. I mean, you know you've made it if you got that desk. Suspect arrested driving a stolen vehicle, but he has what appears to be legit um, title to it. Stolen auto. Let's talk to you. Where were you taking the car, James? Blow it off, Greenhorn. You'll get nothing from me. Look at that. He's real nervous. Okay, we're going bad cop right here. You're a two-time loser. If you don't give me something, I'm going to ask the DA for the maximum. You're looking at ten years, Belasco. Kiss your youth goodbye. So he's been arrested. I want a deal. Aha, Keep talking was... and we'll see what sort of deal you're worth. My job is to drive the cars out of state. Nevada, Arizona, sometimes New Mexico. With the paperwork they provide, it's normally a breeze. Okay, so what is your association with this Gene Archer that we just put an APB out on? That was really smart of Cole to do that. That wasn't my idea, it was his. Does the name Gene Archer mean anything to you? Nope. Never heard of her. He's lying. Um, can I prove it? The fake address. He has the same address that, right? Did I write down that address? Yeah, on his ownership papers, it gives that same address we just went to. Fake address. Okay, so I have fake address. So I can accuse him. You're a liar, James. Say that again. I'm telling the truth. I don't know the broad. Fake address. So that's why you both have the same address printed on your pink slips. She's a mule for these stolen vehicles, genius. Same as you. 
Jesus. All right, I know her. Stupidest broad I ever met. Always cooking up crazy schemes. I don't know why those guys use her. You happy now? Crazy schemes? Like, instead of delivering the cars out of state, selling them? Auto theft? Oh, and I, there was what a prompt and I missed it. What happens to the once they cross over the state lines? I don't know. I just deliver them. He is lying. He is just, we're going bad cop. Give me something to last call, or I'll take you back to the cells and tell the whole station you're a child molester. How long do you think you'll last? Mm, okay, okay. I hear you. The cars get sold in Chicago or back east. Sometimes I bring back cars coming the other way. Okay, so where, uh, where are these warehouses at? Where do you pick up the cars, Velasco? Warehouses. Mainly in East downtown. East LA. Uh, I need an address. He, look at him, he is scared, he, he is scared to death. Uh, I need an address. A warehouse in East LA doesn't get me, okay, bad cop. An address, Velasco. Thank you. You want my help with the DA? Cough it up, now. A place on Industrial Street. I don't know the number. You're gonna help me out, right? Keep talking, kid, and we'll see what we can do. Good cop, bad cop. All right, James. We're gonna That's check if I'm this talking. information is worth anything. And if it is, I need your help here, pal. Yeah, if it yeah. is, then we'll know you're a man of your word, and so will the DA. You're Phelps, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm busy. Look, can we do this later? I'm in the middle of it. Ray Pinker. I'm with Technical Services. The pink slips are all real. So they're not forgeries. Yes, we know that. There's only one company that prints them in California, the Marquee Printing Company. They've confirmed that the numbers are legitimate. You've checked them out? Sure. They're on Aliso Street, near the corner of San Aliso Pedro. Street. The guy I spoke to was <laughs> Lightball. Street. Gordon Lightball. What was his name? Lightball. Here, I wrote it down. Thanks, Ray. This is Gordon. Ray Leeds. Said she never saw an address. Uh, so why do we... Oh, yeah, we want to... Yeah, we want to talk to this printing company. I'm pushing A and X, B, uh, anything that flip it, it won't flip over. Uh, wow, so now we're picking up all kinds of things to do. Yeah, I'm thinking um, of moving up to a 45. I want to put them down to one round. Moving Thus, up to a 45. Your GTA suspect, Gene Archer, spotted by a patrolman. Western Union office, 253 South Hill. Less than a minute away down the street if you run. Go! She I, won't hang around. I gotta run? Which way? Uh, this way? Uh, take a left. Are we really doing this on foot? Oh, that looks like it. <laughs> we got in a car race, now we're getting in a foot race. What? Oh my God! We should have taken the car. Why in the heck am I? He said run. I thought it was like right on the corner. <laughs> you look at this. Uh, uh, oh no. Um. Kevin. Sorry, lady. Cashing. Uh, oh, go in. I didn't like know I was LAPD. controlling. We'll take it from here. God damn it. Wow, that was cool. Everyone's against me. Look, just let me get my money and get out of here, okay? You look sweet. How about giving the girl a break? I could be very nice. I'm afraid She's I can't do that, Miss Archer. Huh? Stefan, call for a black and white. Just my luck to get the only hair sure cop in the LAPD. Hair shirt? I don't know what that means. Uh, suspect recorded as stolen vehicle to comb. So she, she tried to sell it instead of, I don't know. Okay, let's talk about the stolen. The car you sold to Coombs was stolen, Miss Archer. There won't be any money. I handed over all the right paperwork when I sold it, Buster.
Well, she did. Ah. Uh, she did. But look at her. Uh, let's look at the notebook. Do I have anything? Bill of Sale. Archer's ownership papers. Legitimate. That's what I'm saying. Oh, there's the fake address, though. She gave us a fake address. Okay. Bad cop. Gene, you've blown open the whole operation because you were dumb enough to try to sell one of the cars. What do you think they're going to do to you? Give me something. I was just doing what they do. They pay me 50 bucks to drive the car. I made two grand selling it. You made zero. And if they catch you, you're dead. Is that all your life's worth? Look, okay. a girl needs things. Okay. I don't see you looking out for me. Okay. Um, what, uh, how do you know Belasco? Well, let's look at her. Can we just get this over with? Yeah, she's hiding something. Okay, so how do you how know Belasco? How Belasco been delivering cars? Who is James Belasco? Oh, now she's lying. Ah, uh, we can go right to accuse on this. She's lying. Ah, uh, this is risky. Okay, now I'm going right to accuse. Uh, uh, we know they know each other. You're lying. James Belasco. I don't remember mentioning his first name, Miss Archer. Oh, I... Oh, okay, Well, that's I think why. you did, didn't you? Well, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I don't know him. You don't, huh? guys had the same address to a vacant lot. You are sharp enough to lie to me, Gene. You and James Belasco share the same address on your pink slips. We have him in a cell. Okay, so I know the creep. I the pink slips are real. The home addresses are always vacant lots. Uh, Bigelow is always boasting that the paperwork Bigelow? is legit and that if we stick to our stories... And don't try and sell the car? Yeah, that too. Now we get a new name. Suspect recorded as selling stolen vehicle to Combs. Uh, let's take a look at her. Oh, she thinks she's. Uh, Can we just get this over with? She thinks she's gonna walk. Well, that's a, a stolen auto courier. I don't know what where we're gonna go with that, but that's next. Tell time. me where you picked up the car, Miss Archer. Look, I I can't remember. Let me go, will you? She's Please. What have I got to do? Ooh, she's offering. <laughs> and look at her. Look at her. What can I do? I want to accuse her. Um, with the information I have. Well, definitely not going with trusting her. So it's either bad cop or accused. Ah, uh, what do you guys say about this? Um, I don't know. Um, so I'm reading your advice on how to proceed with this stuff based on the info we have. Uh, God. I wish we had more detailed options. Well, I don't know what we would be accusing her of. I mean, we've already accused her of, of uh, dealing. I'm going to go bad cop. God, I, this is wrong. Trying my patience here, Gene. I'll have the reporters down here and have your picture in all the papers. They'll have nowhere to run. All right, already. I get the message. I pick up the cars from a guy named Bigelow. 58 Industrial Street. Big warehouse full of goons. Now, you've got what you want. Can I go? No. Please? No, you sure can. We've got a car waiting outside for you. We're going to see Bigelow. Some career advice, Gene. Get out of crime. I was lucky. I was lucky. Marry someone boring who has money and will find you captivating. Is this guy for real? 
He takes a little getting used to. Burn. But yeah, he generally means what he says. Oh, coal, coal, I like it. Okay, now. Ooh, okay. We got one of them. So she was. I saw what we did there. Was threatened to expose her as a rat, as ratting out the uh, the ringleaders. And uh, so she's, yeah. Uh, do we want to call this in or anything it's like that? Uh, it's not about getting. Uh, let me look at the map. Whenever they show a, a phone, it means I need to make a call. I don't see that. Um, I've got a couple of yellow dots. Combs autom oh, Automotive. That was the first call. Marquee Printing. We haven't been there yet. Uh, but she just gave us a new name. Um... Is that Bigelow? No, this is Bigelow. 58 Industrial. Uh, hold on, let me look at my notebook. Uh, I think that's... We need to go where Bigelow is, and I, I need to look back at <laughs> my memory. I need to look back at what I just did here. I believe this was the address... For the for the warehouse, um, and where? Uh, well, let's just go there. Yeah, I, I'm sure of it. Um, um, let's go, buddy. Um, you drive. I need to go over the case notes. Well, and shoot, where here exactly I am doing stuff going? out of order. This is where I got in trouble last time. We should go to Marquee Printing. Um, yeah, that's what, yeah, I got in trouble on the last one doing stuff out of order, and I've already done. Uh, let's go to Marquee Printing. Uh, let's keep it in order. That was the lesson I learned on the last one. All right, we'll go to Marquee Printing. And we're still driving their little family car. Oh, no. Friendly girl, used to getting her own way. Little did she know her feminine charms were useless against the impenetrable Cole Phelps. She's not my type. And what is your type, Phelps? I'm married. I know that. But you're not blind or dead inside, are you? Wait, scrap that second half of the question. Uh, I don't know. Blondes, I guess. Hallelujah! The man is human after all. Now we're getting some. Yep, I'm with you on the blondes. Reds are fine too. What's wrong with and redheads? There's nothing wrong with a good okay, redhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they draw the line of gray. You know, I, I might have to lift that embargo soon in the interest of maintaining a free home. A man with high standards. Our standards are only as high as the last glass of beer. Ah, well, at least he has standards. I've never had a redheaded girlfriend. And I'm way past uh, having one now. Uh, 4.32 p.m. So this is where they're printing the, um, right? Let me move. And what can I do for you, gentlemen? Um, I'm a traffic detective from Central Division. Who's in charge here? I am, Gordon Lightfall. What's this about? We understand that your company prints California vehicle titles. Yes, I have the government contract Who to print pink slips. I've done for some years. Have you had any goods or equipment stolen recently? We're running up against stolen cars with... Hold on. I'm, t t t t I'm not focusing. I'm looking at my notes. Um, Uh, okay. Seemingly legitimate paperwork. Not recently. Uh, have you ruled out forgery? There's no shortage of talented artists in this town. We'll keep it in mind. Okay, so my notes don't help me. Where, where's you, where are you going? 
leaving us on our own. Yeah, my notes don't help me um, with what we want from this guy. Um, I don't. What do we want from him? We have some questions for you, Mr. Lightbulb. I don't know what they might be. Uh, knowledge of the theft racket. Mr. Lightbulb, we're currently working two auto theft cases. Do you know anything about a car theft ring? Uh, certainly not. Oh. Why would I get mixed up in a thing like that? Oh, he stepped back. He started blinking. This is, um, he's not making eye contact. He's looking down and to the left. It, yeah, bad cop. We have suspects with legitimate pink slips that were printed here, Lightbulb. Right. You better give me something before I bring the whole department down here. Don't be hysterical, detective. There we go. We As a matter him. of fact, we had a similar problem a couple of years ago. A number of used car lots were selling blank documents to a criminal organization. So he's passing it off on the, uh, he's up to something. Um, Listen, I'm busy. You know where the door is. Uh, can I review the evidence? Um, receipt. We want the, um, we want the things with, yeah, right here. Legitimate pink slip. Legitimate pink slip. Listen, I'm busy. You know where the door is. Pink slip supply. Do the names Cliff Harrison and James Velasco mean anything to you? No, they do not. He's lying. Uh, bad cop. Harrison bought his car from Coombs. The pink slip looks good, and that points the finger here. Do you have any employee trouble? No, I don't. They've all been carefully screened. Look, now that I think about it, the name Coombs sounds familiar i think they may have been involved in stolen documents in the past did we even mention coombs do you have a delivery ledger mr lightwell we would like to cross check against the coombs automotive emporium it's a little out of the ordinary detective uh, i'm not sure i can share those sorts of records yes you can uh And an overlight ball. You don't want us having bad thoughts about you, do you? Very well. But this that really is irregular. Over I was going to go hard on him, but I... What are we doing? Oh. Uh, open ledger. Look for patterns, recurring names, unusual addresses, anything out of the ordinary. Okay, our partner's telling us to look for patterns. Um, do I, can I move his finger? Patterns. All different names. Bigelow. That's one of our guys. Publishing, Faulkner. The dates. Browning. We don't know. Bigelow again. Okay, so Bigelow on December 13th. Bigelow on December 14th. Uh, what do you get? Three boxes, three boxes large, three boxes large, as before. Where is he? Uh, Bigelow. S. Bigelow, S. Bigelow. Okay, so the only repeating pattern here, the Wright brothers, is um, we got a bunch of Bigelows. Bigelow, it looks like the only... Repeating customer. Uh, can we turn the page? A. Is he on this page? He's on this page. Um, I mean, I didn't look at all of them as before. By Bigelow, it says 58 Industrial. 58 Industrial. 58 Industrial. Bigelow is all over this book. You certainly encourage repeat business, Lightbulb. 
This Mr. Bigelow is a good customer. Okay. Sorry to bother you, sir. We'll let you know if there are any developments. What? We're done? This guy is fishy. Can I put an X? Well, I trust you've got all that you need. I put a stack. Uh, he's fishy. I can open this door. Just goes where? Out to the street. Time clock? Is Bigelow an employee? No, oh, nothing. Um, let's go back in. Can't open that. You can only open the ones with gold handles. So this guy is making pink slips. So print three, gift me, papoose, all that. Uh, he so that I mean so that's government. So he has to have permission or a, a contract. He has a contract from the government to do that. I want a different car. <laughs> Can I? Did the car option line up yet? Outfits. No. All right. So let's head over to industrial. You know the way. You can drive. Uh, where are we going? Well, we're at Marquee. Did I miss something? We're here now. Okay, why isn't it crossed off? I missed something. Um, I gotta use the RV. RV isn't giving me anything. What did we miss? Well, I trust you've got all that you need. Press A, nothing. Uh, okay, but it's it's not I'm, it's not crossed off. Dang it! Ah, I don't understand. All right, let's go to industrial. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. It's so circled. where do you want to go? Now it's circled. I see. I don't know what that means. Uh, well, let's go to industrial. And um, I need to take a break first, uh, just because I'm thirsty and uh, I need to think. Oh, what's going on? Uh oh, we've got guns drawn. I need a break, though, guys. For a couple of black and whites, the flesh down here. I thought you Marines were gung ho, Cole. You have a 45, don't you ever want to use it? No, not I'll if take you don't the back. Have to. Just give me a few seconds to get around there. Okay, before we do this, whatever we're doing here. We're in a cutscene. So we get out of the cutscene, I wanna take a break. So he's covering the other entrance. Cole Phelps, LAPD. All of you are coming downtown with me. Whoa! Shot my hat off. Ah, uh, and, and, and Elder. Throw out the guns. Elder moving between cover. Holy crap. Can I crouch? Get behind. Oh wow! That's so much for my brain. Need a different way. There he is. He's right there. I got him. Come on. Our partner needs cover. I got hit. Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of them. Ah.
two left. They're surrounded, and your buddies are dead. And it's the electric. Where's it shooting Where's it crazy? I thought he was there. I'm gonna put holes in you, asshole. Find the cover! are gone. All right, all right, don't shoot! What? Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. Okay, now I'm taking my break. <laughs> Jay Wiz, man. This is fun! We got a foot race. We got a car chase. We got shooting. We just gunned down. How many guys were there? Like eight of them? I'll be right back at you, man. Smoke them if you got them. Because I am. And I need a drink. Oh, man. You won't believe this. I just I just remembered something. <laughs> oh, my God. I, hadn't, I, I, I have completely forgot about this till just now. Oh, you're not even going to believe this. I was a courier. <laughs> Uh, it was one of the part-time jobs I took at college. We would take all kinds of different part-time jobs um, uh, for the summer, you know, to, just to make money for the summer. Like, you know, that's what I, I – one summer I did the um, DMT training. You know, I thought I was going to be an ambulance driver. I applied for I applied for it, and I got, I got it, you know, trainee, you know, and uh, and different things. But this, this one – I mean, a friend of mine um, um, – and I uh, got uh, hired uh, to, uh, there, there was this dealership in, ba this was in Bakersfield, this, uh, so was the EMT training. But the, there was a dealership in Bakersfield, but they also had a dealership that, uh, in, um, I can't remember, I think it was either San Bernardino or Riverside. And the people in the, at the um, dealership in either of one of those two places, Riverside and uh, San Bernardino, uh, they had a buyer for a Toyota Celica. This is 1973. So I, we, I drove a brand new Toyota Celica from Bakersfield, from the dealership in ba Bakersfield. It was legit, guys. I wasn't, I wasn't one of these guys, I swear. I don't think. I don't know. Or was, was I? Uh, no, this is legit. It was dealership to dealership. Uh, so it had dealer plates on it uh, from Bakersfield to um, San Bernardino. And then the dealership in Bakersfield had a buyer for an RV that was in the San Bernardino dealership. So I drove the um, uh, uh, the RV, it was a Class C RV, uh, back to San Bernardino. I can't remember what my friend drove, but we both drove uh, two brand new cars in 1973. I was in a little sports car. Uh, I, do they still make Toyota Celicas? I don't think they do. I don't know. I haven't seen any in a long time. It's 1973 Toyota Celica, a little sports car, brand spanking new. Drove it to San Bernardino, drove the RV back, and then we did. Uh, and, and it was temporary. It was uh, it was spotty. It wasn't an everyday thing. But they would call us whenever they needed uh, vehicle swaps. I just remembered. I was I completely forgot about that. Let me get my big head out of here and try to remember what we're doing. Um. Uh. He's holding this guy. I can't remember his name. Um, uh, and, and I am supposed to look around. I, where's my hat? I'm supposed to look around. Okay, I'm casing a joint. There's stuff here. I'm getting a vibration. 
we're getting from Marquee, Gordon Lightbulb. Marquee Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. What does it say on it? If package is short or damaged, have the driver uh, notate this bill. Uh, I can't flip it. I can't do anything else with it. I'm trying. I can't. Okay. What are these? Santa Anita. That's a slip. Looks like slip. Mr. Lightball has been on a losing streak. Lightball? Can I press A on it? I'm pressing A. I'm pressing X. I'm trying to manipulate it. Lose. Lightball is playing the horses, and there's a bunch of them, uh, but I can only select one. Okay. Um, what else? I want my hat. Can I loot this guy? <laughs> He's playing games with Where's my hat? Um, focus. Um, I'm getting a vibration. That's nothing. This doesn't pertain to the case. No, it doesn't. Um, anything else? Okay, so light bulb. There was a bunch of of of, of um, um, horse racing uh, losing tickets. Uh, so he was betting the horses big time. How does that play into anything? I want my hat. <laughs> I want my hat. It got blown off early in the in the fight. I'm sorry, guys, but I want my hat. Uh, I don't know where I got my hat blown off at. No! Oh crap, 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 crap. Oh crap, crap, crap. All right, all right, don't shoot! Keep your hands up. Watch him, Bukowski. He doesn't move until I've tossed this place. Okay. I got my hand. That's all I wanted. Okay, so there is a bunch of tickets there. One, two, three, four. How much was he betting? So was he in... Um, Okay, there it is. Uh, 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 RB, clues. Okay, I'm pushing RB. Uh, show all clues. Remaining four. Okay, we've got a couple of, of, of things to look at uh, still. Are they inside? They gotta be inside with him. Uh, okay, I looked at these. Did I not look at them thoroughly enough? Okay, let's try to Manipulate it. I can't. Marquee Printing Company. <laughs> There's nothing like going direct to the source. I can't turn it. I can't do anything with it. No, 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 no. Um, it, his hand moved too fast. Do I? Is, is there another note that I need to pick up? Betting slip. Looks like Mr. Lightball has been on a losing streak. Canceled that. There's another something. I'm not getting a vibration. Uh, marquee printing. There are enough slips here to keep them stealing cars till Christmas. Um, can't do anything with it. We've got a trail of pink slips and stolen cars that leads right to your door, Bigelow. You're in this up to your neck, but I don't think you're the man in charge. Make it easier on yourself. Give him up. I do work on cars for customers. 
You charge in here shooting up the place like it's the Ballad of Bulge. I can't give you anything. Lying. How about the pink slip supply? You know about marquee printing. You can make this easier on yourself by giving us your man on the inside. I sometimes repair cars and put them back on the road. I need a pink slip to resell them. There's no problem there. Ah, uh, definitely bad cop. He, he, we can't accuse him of anything, but we can bad cop him. There are at least four dead men in this warehouse. A couple more. Punks won't make for that much extra paperwork. You'd be doing the legal system a favor. Okay, okay, tough guy. I get the message. Threatening. Lightfall. The guy who runs Marquis. He's the big shot. What? Like you spend big at the track. He owes people. So he's being blackmailed. Association. Light bulb. The guy with no luck at the track. Tell me about him. One well, of the guys lying over there. <laughs> right. Nice try. There's no luck. Nice try. Nice try. Uh, I can accuse him on this. Uh, I'm going. I'm going hard. I, oh gosh, I'm going to regret this. This is wrong. I'm going. I'm going tough on him, man. Um, well, let me look at my notes from you guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can accuse him. Uh, we've got the evidence. Boom. That's the best lie you can come up with, Bigelow. Hey, would I lie to you, detective? Yeah, I'm you exactly just did. The position here now, am I? Okay, uh, we can prove it because we have the, um, the betting slips, gambling debts, box of pink slips. Uh, okay, now it's just a choice. Now it's just a matter of. Let's go with the box of pink slips. No proof, huh? Looks like your mouth moves faster than your little pencil. Wrong. Whether you give up your bosses or not, Bigelow, you're going away for as long as I can put you there. I made a mistake. We'll see. I didn't fire a shot, copper. I just watched you tear my place up. Crap. So what should I have gone with? Well, we got him arrested. Uh, what would have worked there? Uh, the betting slips. Ah, uh, new objective. I didn't see it. Um, shoot. Um, I don't know what it would have worked there. Um. Uh, shoot. I'm just, now I'm, I'm irritated at myself. Solve that big case. Um, well, we got to go back for light ball. What could I have done there? Can I? No, I can't. I can't bring up my uh, ledger. Is this our car? Yeah. You're behind the wheel. Uh, where are we going? Marquee printing. Light ball. He just got fingered as the the, the boss. So they were blackmailing him. Uh, gonna take some cleaning up, that's for I sure. I don't know where we I went wrong on that. On that. Well, we shouldn't bring guns to work with him. We didn't have a lot of choice. You have to admire the barefaced cheek of someone who tries to blow your brains out one minute and pleads innocence the next. Yeah, especially when he's surrounded by evidence. You know, guys like Bigelow spend so much time convincing themselves that they're not doing anything wrong that they actually start to believe their own bullshit. They get sloppy. Bigelow, Lightball, all of them. If they hadn't, who knows how long they could have kept this racket going. Complacency or greed. It's always one of the two that brings them down. I, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make that much sense, um, unless he was losing super big, and they had, um, 
I don't know how it would work that they would... Uh, national news from American Century Broadcasting. That they would use his gambling problem. Uh, well, okay, so they're using his gambling problem. You're under arrest. You again? This harassment is starting to wear thin. Deliveries to industrials. We found a box of pink slips in a warehouse full of hot cars. You signed for them, Lightball. I signed for all the orders and deliveries. You'll need something better than that, cowboy. Ah. View the notebook. Okay, where did I mess up? Oh, gambling debts for him. Gambling debts. Oh, I, I can't click on it. Delivery ledger. That's where I went wrong with Bigelow. I needed to do this. I needed to hit, hit him with this. What I hit him with? I hit him with a box of pink slips. This is what I should have hit him with, I bet. Okay, so gambling debts. Um, we're just going to accuse this guy. There's no reason to do anything else. Save it, Lightball. We already have all we need to send you down. I've had enough of this. You either produce some shred of proof, or I call my attorney. Not a problem. Gambling debts. You're in the hole with the organization. We know about the debts, Lightball. I agree. I have a small problem. I'm prepared to help you in any way I can, Detective. I'll name names. Uh, I need you to keep this out of the paper. I need... You need to shut up now, Lightball. Gordon Lightball, I'm charging you with conspiracy and fraud. Hands behind your back. 404 correct. The LAPD Central Traffic Division has today smashed a nationwide auto theft ring, writes crime correspondent, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Traffic squad detectives confronted a large group of armed thugs. After an exchange of gunfire, more than a dozen dead criminals were removed from the scene. The LAPD sustained no casualties. <laughs> Damn fine work, Phelps. Now get out there and nail some more bad guys, will you? Uh, that's it? No, I want some more. reading this. That was... Uh, okay. Weird. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. Um... Five star? Uh, even though I got one question wrong, I still get five star! Now I feel good. Now I feel good. I wasn't feeling good because, uh, you know, I blew. I thought I blew it with uh, what's his name, uh, the guy in the warehouse, um, Bigelow. Might be a hood, <clears throat> but he had the dirt on le uh, light ball, and would have flipped if encouraged. Ah, dang! That's where I messed up. But we still get five stars. Okay, so you can make one mistake and still get it. City damage, 95 bucks. Sorry about that. And 20 to this. And, and I stole uh, some citizen's uh, vehicle. <laughs> nice. Nice. No, I, but see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I, I, why don't I feel... Okay. I just don't feel like it was it was um, a hard enough case. I mean, I, okay, okay. So the guy had a gambling problem. The car theft ring. How did they get his betting slips? Was it, oh, so were they were they were they also bookies? And so so Bigelow was his bookie. And so, okay, now, okay, now I get it. So he was, okay. So, Lightball is legit 
government contractor for making legit pink slips. Bigelow has the car theft ring. And it apparently is also his bookie or somehow gets a hold of his, his uh, losing betting slips and says, look, man, uh, we're going to make this known. You'll lose your job. Be disgraced. Hey, man, but if you give me some uh, some official pink slips, so not even counterfeit, the real legit pink slips, you know, uh, we can play ball and maybe cancel your, your debts. Okay, 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 okay. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. It just doesn't seem like, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get in cahoots with them. It just uh, so uh, Lightball, who was a uh, a weak character, to allow himself to get suckered into this this ring, and then the other two couriers, we got them busted. Uh, we didn't hear about the boy. Apparently, they'll let him go. All right, that's good. All good. All good. So that'll be it. Uh, that'll be the end of this episode. Uh, I, I, I would, I would like to do two episodes, but I stuck that, uh, that, that, uh, Mike Hammer, um, uh, video in at the beginning. So it's going to take up a lot of time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I'm just loving this game and I'm so, so surprised. I thought like if you made one mistake, you didn't get a five star, but apparently there's some, some leeway there and, uh, still get a five star. Uh, so that makes me feel good, but I still feel like I, 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 I don't know. You go through this thing and you just, I just, because I don't feel like I did a good job, uh, because, uh, things like calling in the, uh, the APB on, on the woman, I forget her name now. Um, uh, the, the woman that was hitting on us, uh, I didn't think of that. You know, I just saw the phone prompt on the map and said, okay, let's go and see if we can find out more information on her. We, I was thinking address, but we already had her address, uh, which was the fake address on the, to a vacant lot. But we didn't, I don't think we knew that at that time. So um, just because the phone prompt was on the map, I went to the phone. I, so I don't feel personally good that, um, you know, as I, you know, I should have thought of it myself. Call in an APB on this, what was her name, Jennifer, I think, or something. Uh, call in an APB on her. I didn't think of that, but but Cole did, and he did it. There's a couple other things, a couple other questions and stuff and directions that he went to. So, again, it's the game um, uh, kind of not holding your hand, but but the design of the game. I went there, I mean, um, that I didn't think of. And so... If I don't think of it, I don't feel completely good. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Y'all take care, and we'll see you on the next one. I can't wait. Oh, wait, before we go, let's advance it and see what the next uh, case is. Um, oh, he's having a flashback. My family runs a shipping business in San Francisco. We used to have two ships a week to Tokyo. We've been in shipping for two generations, Hank. I've never been on a voyage anywhere. I feel like Odysseus in the beginning of his journey. <laughs> the Odyssey took 10 years, Cole. The Odyssey was a great book. This is the American century. America can rule the world after we win this war. We need Cole. to stay alive, Cole. This is not Cole. These men are counting on us. Have you heard what the veterans are saying to each other? No. Golden Gate in 48. That's four more hard years of fighting. I don't know what the significance is of his... The fallen idol of his uh, flashbacks. Somebody. Phelps, Bukowski, you have a new case. Two women. 
possible drink drive. How was that a case? The broad says she was doped and that somebody tried to kill her. Where did this take place? That's the bitch you're gonna love. Right across the street. What? What? Oh. A Chevy style line took a nosedive off the escarpment, fetched up underneath a Cola King billboard. Up to it, boys. We got bad guys to catch. <laughs> a little twist. She was 13 if she was a day. See you later, fellas. Try not to work too hard. Okay. That's where we'll that's where we'll uh end it so that we know where we're gonna pick up. All right, I'm gone for good this time. Y'all take care. Thank you for watching. Ah. <sighs>